A portion of today's video was sponsored by Credit Sesame. This is the new 2022 Audi S8, and it's the high-performance version of Audi's full-size A8 luxury sedan. It's been updated for 2022, and it's still as impressive as ever, with a twin-turbo V8 that makes over 560 horsepower and a starting price of around $120,000. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, I want to talk about Credit Sesame, which is the sponsor of today's video. Credit Sesame offers a lot of excellent benefits that can help you build and monitor your credit. But did you know that Credit Sesame also offers a digital debit account called Sesame Cash that can help you build your credit? Sesame Cash is amazing because it's a debit card that still allows you to build your credit history. So if you're anxious about getting a credit card, but you still want to build your credit history, Sesame Cash credit builder is the way to go. And it's free with no monthly subscriptions, no fees, no interest, and no credit check. Just make all the purchases you normally would and Sesame Cash reports to all three credit bureaus to grow your credit score. And the best part is that Credit Sesame pays you as your credit score increases. So you can build your credit score and earn cash rewards from Sesame Cash. To find out more about Sesame Cash, click the link in the description below, sign up for free, and you can be well on your way to building your credit with a free debit card from Credit Sesame. So let's talk Audi S8. I reviewed the outgoing model, the 2020 version, about two years ago, but it's now been updated for the 2022 model year with some changes. The big stuff stays the same though, including this twin turbo V8 that makes over 560 horsepower. And today I'm going to show you the rest. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the S8 and show you all of its interesting quirks and features, then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the new S8 with probably its most interesting quirk. One of the most interesting quirks of any modern full-size luxury sedan, and that would be the fact that it raises up when you go to climb inside. Check this out, I open up the door and the body actually rises a few inches. You just saw that. <laughs> in order to make it easier to get inside. Watch this again. Open the door and the body rises up a couple of inches every single time you open the door. Now, the reason they're doing this is more and more of Audi's customers are telling them they prefer SUVs because they're easier to climb in and out of compared to a car where you kind of have to slouch down and it's more difficult. So the antidote for that in a car is to make it rise up to an SUV's ride height so it's easier to get inside. And of course, when you close the door, it takes a few seconds, but after a while, the car will go back down to its normal, regular ride height, so it sits in its normal position. It only raises up when you go and open the door, and it does so immediately, as you saw, which is quite an interesting quirk of this car. But anyway, next up, we climb inside the new S8, and the first thing you notice in here is it's fine. Not amazing, not tremendously exceptionally special like you might expect from a full-size luxury sedan. I recently reviewed the new Mercedes S-Class about a year ago, and that car has so much more occasion and presence and beauty and luxury in its interior. The new S8 has a nice enough interior. It's acceptable. It's okay, but it doesn't quite have that level of luxury and prestige, that sense of occasion you get in the S-Class. And BMW is readying a brand new 7 Series luxury sedan, which I suspect will only further leave the A8 and the S8 in the dust in terms of interior. Very nice in here, but just not on that level. But with that said, this is still a flagship luxury sedan, so there are some excellent touches in here. Like, for example, the climate vents do not reveal themselves until you turn on the climate controls. You can see right now there are no visible climate vents to add to a simplistic kind of modernist look in this interior. Only when you turn on the climate controls do the covers over the vents rise up automatically and the vents move into place in order to blow air on you. Turn them off again and it all goes away 
way, again, to preserve sort of this simplistic modernist look in here. And speaking of the climate controls, here's an unusual touch that they offer. In your plebeian car, your climate vents just blow out air. In this car, they also blow out a fragrance, and you can turn it on or off here. You can even select how powerful you want the fragrance to be, and you can choose from two different fragrances, summer and winter, which is kind of odd to me because I'm not quite sure how those things smell. The Mercedes S-Class also has fragrances, and it's common smelling things, but Audi has summer and winter in the new S8. And another nice climate control touch in this car compared to your plebeian car. This vehicle has heated seats, of course, but it also has heated panels. This center armrest will heat up when you turn on the heated seats, and so will the armrest on the door, giving you extra heating for not just your butt, but also your arms, which is pretty cool. And check out this climate control quirk, the little sliders that open or close the vents in your plebeian car. It's just a little wheel you turn. Here, it's a little LED touchpad. You tap it to dial the vents to exactly the openness that you want, which proves that everything ultimately has technology added to it, even the climate control vent sliders. And next up, more luxury stuff in this interior. For one thing, the door release is electronic. So this is the door handle here. You only pull it like a millimeter and it pops open automatically. And then you just open the door the rest of the way. No old school handles in this car. And speaking of excellent technology in here, the camera system is quite cool. You have a backup camera, top down camera, pretty standard, but you also have this 3D camera that allows you to see basically all angles around the car. And you easily just swipe your finger on the screen to move to see exactly what you want, which can make it easy to position the camera perfectly if there's some obstacle you're afraid to clear. And speaking of screens, another fantastic feature of this car is the gauge cluster screen, which really is the finest of these gauge clusters in the car industry. It is a full screen, as you can see, but the cool part is how configurable it is. You can have basically any view showing anything you want to prioritize, various different layouts and settings that you can have it display, including this full screen map. And not just a map, but like a 3D Google Earth image of where you are, which is incredibly cool to see, especially directly below the windshield. So you can just look up and look down very easily at this cool 3D map. And speaking of maps in this car, another cool feature is you can write out your destination for the navigation system. You can see here I'm writing out an entire word. Some cars let you write, which is cool, but they make you go letter by letter. But here you can write out the whole thing. And only once you're done does the navigation system analyze what you wrote and and then point you there. So you don't have to write an S and then wait and then a B and then wait and then an R and then wait. You can do the whole thing. Pretty cool. Now, the reason you're able to do this navigation map on top and writing your destination on bottom is because this car has this sort of slick dual screen setup in the center. You got an upper screen that controls most functions and a lower screen, which is primarily climate control, but it can also do some other stuff like write your navigation destinations. Two screens, and it makes sense because this car has so many features and so much technology that you just can't use physical buttons in order to get everything to display. So screens can make more sense. Now, in the past, I've been critical of cars that have put climate controls on a screen, but I like how it works here, especially because the climate controls are pretty much always fixed in place, so you know where they are, even though they're not physical buttons, and it all just works very easily, including if you want to drop the temperature, you can just slide your finger on the temperature slider and raise or lower it very easily. The only real drawback of these screens is that the upper one is primarily haptic, which means you can't just tap on it like a normal touchscreen. You have to tap and push down, which is pretty annoying. And this isn't really a setting you can change. It just depends on what menu or screen you're on. But most of the upper screen controls are like that. And it's just not great. It adds a little complication and it feels a little bit outdated to use. And speaking of outdated, the same is true with this car's driver assist technology. The S8 has adaptive cruise control, so it'll speed up and slow down based on the car in front of you. But this one doesn't have any any form of automatic steering, which I think is crazy in a modern luxury car. I drive Toyotas that'll steer for you on the highway. Not this. Definitely starting to feel old, even though this is the refreshed new S8. 
And next up on the subject of some of the features this car might be lacking, let's talk price point with the new S8. This car starts around $120,000, just under, which is actually a $15,000 price cut compared to the outgoing model, which is pretty rare in today's car world. Usually its price increases with inflation and demand, but not here. They actually cut the price of the new S8. In fact, the new S8 starts closer in price to the base model Mercedes S-Class than the regular a8 and s class starts around $105,000. This is around 118 and a regular a8 starts around 86 87 thousand dollars So Audi is trying to undercut its rivals Which makes sense because this car just isn't quite as compelling at least so far from an interior perspective But it does play the value card pretty well compared to Mercedes-Benz and BMW But it's not just pricing that's new for the updated 2022 s8 There's also some other changes and the most noticeable outside is the grille. It is bigger and wider than before in keeping with Audi's practice and other automakers in increasing their grille size. And so it's easy to distinguish the new S8 from the old one based on the grille. Also updated are the taillights. It's difficult to see when they're turned off. There's some minor changes, but it's easy to spot when the headlights are on because they light up rather strangely with these weird four triangles lighting up as taillights in the back. Very interesting and very distinctive. But even more distinctive is what what happens when you put on the turn signal you can see here a line sweeps across but also the remainder of the triangle area lights up including a little Audi logo in that spot it's very strange very unusual and it's new for the 22 s8 certainly a unique touch to this car and kind of a strange taillight turn signal lighting situation but aside from those notable changes to the s8 the rest of this car from the outside remains like it always has which is to say reasonably subtle this has always been a relatively restrained performance luxury sedan. It doesn't quite have some of the pomp and circumstances of its rivals. Now, there are some drawbacks to that. It almost looks like just a big A4, a big A6, and it doesn't have that luxury car persona. But the benefit is it flies under the radar a lot more than some of the other luxury models, which some people do prefer. Now, one clear way to distinguish the performance S8 from other A8 models is the exhaust. You got a quad exhaust back here as you can see, and it sounds quite nice. Take a listen to a little rev. And of course, that rev comes courtesy of this, the engine twin turbo V8 makes about 560 horsepower and about 590 pound feet of torque, which are strong numbers. And it sends this car from zero to 60 in around 3.2, 3.4 seconds, which is a very impressive figure for a car like this, a big full size luxury sedan. Now, one interesting thing about the revised 2022 A8, this car is the only way you can get a V8 in the A8 anymore. Regular A8 models will now only be a V6, and the S8 is the only way to get the V8. Audi is clearly paring back the A8 lineup because sales just aren't where they used to be. The A8 has always been the least popular of the full-size German luxury sedans, and now with more and more buyers choosing SUVs, they're scaling back their offerings. And in fact, I wouldn't be completely surprised if this is the very last generation A8 and S8 at all, as buyers are just shifting more to SUVs. SUVs and cars like this are just not as popular anymore. But anyway, next up we move on to the back seat of the S8 and I gotta say it is tremendously luxurious back here. Absolutely huge. This is a long wheelbase model. You used to be able to get the A8 with a short wheelbase configuration as well, but the lineup has been scaled back over the years and now it's a long wheelbase or nothing and it is luxurious, roomy, tons of space in the back of the S8. It really does feel very comfortable back here. And it has some nice luxury touches back here too. For instance, you can raise or lower the rear sunshade. This shade in the back window goes up or down with the press of a button in back. You can also raise or lower sunshades on the rear windows. You can see here it goes up automatically in order to shade you from the sun, which is a lovely feature to have. And you can do the same thing with the rear sunroof sunshade. You can open or close it at the push of a button so you can have more sun back here or less depending on what you want. 
want. Strangely enough, this car also offers the ability to open or close the front sunroof from the back. This button here looks like a window switch, but if you press it, it will open the front sunroof even though you're sitting in back. I guess they figure chauffeured rear passengers should have the choice of whether the front sunroof is open, but you might not want to put kids back here because they could use that feature to great annoyance. Now, other controls you have in back, you can see this armrest here. If you fold it up, you have three seats back here, but if you fold it down, you have your climate controls on the armrest. You can see adjust the temperature, the fan speed, the heated seat, that sort of thing. A little bit of a drawback to put these controls on the folding center armrest because it means if you do have a center rear passenger, you can't adjust your climate control or turn on your heated seats. Most cars, they put them at the back of the front center console where they're easier to reach and they're always available, but not this time. Still nice to have those controls. And you also have a lot of power ports back here. In the rear center armrest storage compartment, you lift this up and you have two USB-C ports, which is nice. And in this little folding panel behind the front center console, you have two cigarette lighter style ports. So you can plug in quite a lot of devices in the back of your S8. And finally, last notable item in the new S8 is the trunk, although frankly, it's not actually all that notable. Fairly large, like you would expect from a luxury sedan, but nothing interesting or weird or quirky in here. The only rather quirky trunk item is that the handle that lifts up the lower floor compartment is also a clip that will clip it in place to this weather stripping, so it'll leave the floor lifted up, giving you easy access to your tire in case you want to change the tire by the side of the road, which is a cool piece of design and a nifty idea. Otherwise, back Back here, it's just a trunk. And so those are the crooks and features of the new 2022 Audi S8. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new S8. And I gotta say, I've been driving this car around for a few days now, and I would, I would say there are pros and cons to this car. My biggest drawback is that this just doesn't feel quite like the experience that the S-Class does. I drove the new S-Class about 10 months ago, and since then I've drawn a Maybach one as well. And the new S-Class is just the best. It's riding on a cloud, it has the finest quilted leather, it feels incredibly luxurious, and frankly, that version is about the same price point as this car. Now, this is the performancey version of the S8, but again, it's priced like a regular S-Class, or a little bit higher, closer to the regular S-Class than the regular A8 is. And so there is a direct comparison there, and this car just doesn't feel like that. It has the feel of like a nice Audi, but it doesn't feel like a flagship luxury sedan. Interior quality, interior materials, interior design, but also ride quality, just the way this car feels, the amount of noise it cancels out, the seats, the suspension, it just, none of it quite feels like an S-Class. And frankly, that has generally always been the A8's problem. The only time I feel that the A8 has really gotten close to the S-Class was in 2003, when that sort of rounded aluminum one came out and the S-Class was in a bad generation. Other than that, this car is always sort of playing catch up and this version is that too. And even though they've updated it for 2022, it still feels behind, especially since the S-Class has just been fully redesigned for 21. The other interesting issue that I have with this car, a little bit of a drawback, is I feel like the transmission is a little lazy. Um, when you press your foot on the accelerator, it takes a second to kind of get going. It has to downshift first. The gears are not incredibly quick, maybe because we've all gotten used to dual clutch cars, whatever, but it just feels a little bit on the lazy side. Now, that is not true of the overall acceleration of this car. It, if you floor it, it hauls, hauls, hauls. And as fast as it feels on the highway flooring it from 70, it feels really, really fast when you floor it from zero. This car is absolutely incredibly, incredibly quick for a vehicle like this. And that's one big advantage it has over a regular S-Class. In terms of acceleration, it feels more like an S63. But around town, even if you stop on the throttle, there's a little bit of a delay. It just seems like the transmission is a, is a little bit on the lazy side, a little bit more on the comfort side. And I think that's actually one of the, the important points with this car. It sort of is a luxury sedan in some areas and a performance sedan in others. It, if, luxury sedan in terms of transmission smoothness, it takes a little while to downshift, it's smooth upshifts, but the result is they're not incredibly fast. They don't feel as like fired off as a dual clutch. 
but then you have the great acceleration, so in that sense, it feels like a performance center, and it's sort of in a weird in-between class. I do really like the technology in this car. I think it's fantastic. Mercedes-Benz now with its massive screen, especially in the EQS, is a step ahead, but this car is not far behind, which is impressive, considering a lot of this technology I started seeing in 1718, and like the Q8 that came out, I think, for the 18 model year. So this tech is getting old, but it's still near the top of its class. I don't like the fact that you have haptic for most of the controls on the upper screen, but I love the gauge cluster screen. I really like how they do everything. And frankly, I like the Audi minimal interior in general. It just doesn't translate tremendously well to a full-size luxury sedan where people expect to be pampered a little more than they expect to be minimal. In terms of handling, this car is also a bit of a mix. It's, it's definitely more spry than, for example, an S-Class or a regular 7 Series, but it doesn't feel like incredibly, shockingly exciting to toss around. It's a big car. It feels like a big car. And while the steering is pretty precise and the body roll is reasonably controlled, it ultimately isn't like a high performance sedan. It sort of bridges that gap and it doesn't always do a great job doing it. I like this car, it's nice, it's good, but I feel like the fact that Audi is paring down its A8 lineup and lowering prices, probably cutting out features, is an indicator that they're just kind of going for a value play for the A8. It's not really moving units like it should, and I don't see any reason why this updated 22 model is any different. I would buy this one if I got a good deal on it, um, and it's already a pretty decent deal, especially considering the performance, but RS7 is there, RS6 are there. Those are the coolest Audis that have amazing performance, and frankly, they have a lot of this luxury stuff as well. And they got better name recognition, they'll have better resale value, they're both more practical, and they're a little bit quicker. And I, I would do that if I wanted a performance Audi, and if I wanted a luxury Audi, I'd probably get a Q7 or a Q8. And that kind of leaves this car as a, a bit of the odd man out in Audi's lineup. And so that's the new 2022 Audi S8. The market for these big luxury sedans has dwindled, and Audi especially isn't a major player in this segment, but this is still a very nice luxury luxury car with a performance flair. And now it's time to give the new S8 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 65 out of 100, which places the S8 here against rivals. Tied with the outgoing S8, it's not that much has changed, and behind the Mercedes S580. Losing to the S580 is particularly notable because the S8 has advantages in acceleration and handling by being the performance model, meaning the S580 overcomes those with other benefits like equipment, comfort, and quality. The new S8 is nice, and it's a decent value, but ultimately it's far from the gold standard in this segment. 